Hey there, Ry the Car Guy here, and today we are beefing up the arms on the Nissan Xterra. So this week we're taking a break from the Titan. Uh, I it's right behind you, I promise. You can't really see it, but uh, we're, that's getting a little kind of tedious at the moment. We're just about to take the engine out, and I just wanted to step away for a couple days and do something different. Kyle from All Dogs Off-Road had just reached out to me about a different topic, and uh, I, got, I asked him, I said, hey, got anything going on? I'm looking for a new project. He said, do you have any aftermarket UCAs on the Xterra? And this project was born. So these just showed up yesterday. I'm super excited. These are the high clearance and high caster upper control arms for the Xterra, Pathfinder, and Frontier. If you follow my channel, you know that I have a full all dogs off-road lift on the Xterra, and this is gonna be the next step, the kind of companion upgrade to that kit. Right now I'm running these stock upper control arms on the Xterra and technically they work. Underweight, of course, there's no clearance issues and even when it's fully drooped, it gets really, really close to hitting that coil bucket, but it doesn't technically contact. I'm running the medium front springs with the 5100s at the lowest setting. So if I were to go pretty much any higher at all, I would start getting that control arm smacking that coil bucket. This upgrade will help us avoid that and it's gonna give us a little more caster. I don't wanna make this intro too long, so we're gonna talk about caster a little bit later in the video. And if you look down at the timeline, you'll see that there's chapters, so you can bounce around if you want to. Not only are we gonna get more clearance and more caster, but these things are just clearly far, far stronger than the stock UCAs. They come with aftermarket ball joints and bushings from Moog, and if you want, all dogs will actually assemble them for you before they even show up at your door. I had them install it on one, so that it came to me this way, and then I had them leave one bare so I can show you how to press these in. Let's go knock that out and we'll be ready to slap these on the Xterra. All right, now pressing is not as, uh, not as dramatic or as difficult as some people think it might be. I just have a, well, of course, a little Harbor Freight 12 ton shop press here. I had to literally dust it off and I have the bottom set one, basically one setting down. So that way we have room for all of our, you know, pressing accoutrement. So grab your control arm. We're gonna start with the ball joint and you can drop it in and you can actually push it down quite a ways until of course it reaches the part that needs to be pressed. And I have to say, uh, bless your hearts all dogs for making this a completely flat surface down here. It's gonna make it a heck of a lot easier to press. And when you see the old control arm, you'll know what I mean. Now I set this up with the small hole because all we need to do is get all of this to fit through and it does without issue. And of course you want to make sure that you're supporting it on this ring here, never support anything on what you're pressing. You'll literally just be pressing the ball joint against itself. And when we're going to press the ball joint, you want to make sure that you're pressing on the shoulder or the top. Do not press on this brass area here. And notice of course our Zerk fitting is missing. That's in our hardware kit that came with this. This is off so you can press and not have to worry about damaging it. I'm going to press using a giant socket. If you don't have a giant socket that will fit this, then uh, you, know, you can rent them from you know, your local auto parts store. And in fact, we'll probably use that for the, the bushings when we press those in. So grab this here, make sure it's nice and flat. And what we're looking to do is press far enough that we can get our circlip in, and you'll see that once we press it through. So push it down. I'm gonna get this here, set on top. And then grab my handle. Where the hell's my handle at? Here it is. Grab my handle and pump this down. In fact, we could probably pump it like this at first. Yeah, there we go. All right, once you get close, make sure everything is still aligned. And you wanna make sure it's going straight down on top of it. So I'm gonna set that up. And it looks like the whole assembly has to go back a little bit. Keep pressing. There we go. So I have pressure on it. I'm just gonna look underneath. I don't have a ton of pressure. I'm not like going crazy on it just yet. Everything looks like it's aligned, it's being supported. And now we grab our handle and give it a few pumps here. All right, looks like we're making progress. Going down. And once it seats, it will get obviously harder, like right there. You'll feel it and we'll see if that did it or not. Let's lift a little bit here, slide it out. All right, looks like we're not there yet. False alarm. Let's get this back in place. Just felt like a little bit here. There we go, that feels pretty good. Ah, that got a lot harder, let's see. Pull it out again. There we go. 
that looks pretty good. It's nice and even all the way around. And it looks like there's more than ample room to get our circlip on. All right, to install our circlip, I just have some circlip pliers. And we set them on there. And we get it in the ring one way or another here. There we go. We have this part in here. I'm gonna go grab the other side. I grabbed a different set of pliers that I just like to pull apart, makes it easier for me. There we go. Perfect. Awesome, snapped in place. So it's looking pretty good. We have our ball joint installed, sewer clip is in place. Let's go deal with the bushings. Now our bushing is gonna be nearly the same. So of course we have our bushing. I'm gonna use a socket, we'll talk about that in a second. Get our control arm, set our bushing in. And what I did is uh, I couldn't find the proper socket to fit the top of this. You know, that's something that made me feel comfortable. So I just ran to my local auto parts store and I rented a, uh, well, it was a bearing press kit, but regardless, it has a nice flat surface that sits on the strong part of the bushing. Now, of course, you would never wanna push a bushing using the interior, right? You'll just tear out the interior. So you want it to sit on the outside and having this little hole in here lets that sit safely inside. So we just line this up, make sure it's as vertical as it can be. And I'm still going to employ my socket. And the reason I'm doing that is that the uh, press, the shot press, doesn't uh, either fit in there or it doesn't sit on the outside far enough. It's kind of in between. So by putting that socket in, I have a much cleaner surface to press on. Let's see if we can get this to line up. Make sure it's nice and even here. And also make sure the surfaces are clean. You obviously don't want to try to push something with grit in it. All right, just getting them to touch. There we go. Make sure it still looks aligned, it does. So I'm going to start pressing. Ah, that looks pretty clean. Awesome. Now on the bottom side, yeah, it looks like it's gonna clear. So we're gonna keep pushing. And it looks like, unfortunately, I don't have it aligned but on the uh, braces, but that's okay. Now that we're most of the way in, it's already aligned. So we're just gonna push that back a little bit. There you go. Basically the, the uh, hole on the bottom wasn't gonna clear this brace. I didn't wanna hit it. And keep going now. And we wanna go until the shoulder of the bushing makes contact with the control arm. There we go. And you'll feel, again, you'll feel a very noticeable difference in the jack. There we go. Support that. Pull it off and heck yeah, that thing is in there. Well, excellent. We have ourselves two fully assembled control arms. There's one more thing I wanna do before we head out and get these things installed, and that's to put your Zerk fitting on. So it's just gonna be a heck of a lot easier with it outside of the wheel well, just sitting in front of us. So we'll go pop those on and then we'll get them installed. Now the Zerk fittings are eight millimeter. And if you look closely, the Moog ball joints come with some grease already in them. But once we get the fittings on and get them assembled, you can grease them pretty much as much as you want. All right, that's looking good. Do that on the other side and let's head out. All right, we're gonna work outside today because it is fantastic out and the Titan is taking up the garage. Swapping them out is actually a pretty simple job. We just have to lift the Xterra up and once it's up, we just get our jack stands and set them up on both sides and make sure that the tires are off the ground. Once it's off the ground and the jack stands are secure, go ahead and take the tire off. And for me, I went ahead and removed the wheel well cover you may be able to get away without doing this. I just do it to make sure that you can see everything when I record. In fact, down in the comments below, let me know if you're able to do it without taking the cover off. I'm gonna demonstrate on the driver's side or the left side, and I'm doing that because it's gonna be the more difficult of the two. And the only reason it's more difficult is we have an obstruction, we have our steering. We have a little arm here, and there's a disconnect right here, which is nice, and that's what we're gonna use. But in order to get this bolt out of the upper control arm, uh, you'll notice that it'll just hit this if we try to slide it out because the nut's over on this side. So we just need to loosen this, slide that bolt out, and then this arm should swing freely and we can bring it out over here in order to slide that bolt out. To pop this off, it's a 14 millimeter. 
Let's see here. That's really on there. Let's take a look here. Calling in the big dogs here. In fact, that's too, that's too close for comfort. There we go. Woo, it's really on there. I feel like I pulled something in my neck doing that. All right, once that's loose, back that nut all the way off. And you can see that joint's already getting loose. And with that loose, slide that bolt out. There we go. And you'll see it's got a little flat piece on it. That's what holds this in place. And then just gently rock it back and forth and it will come out. All right, that's a little tight. So we're gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and I'm just gonna slide it up in between and just gently work on it like that. All right, I don't know why it's giving me so much trouble, but I'm gonna grab a tapered punch here. I'm just gonna work it in there and it will have no choice but to agree with us. All right, this thing's really, really giving me hell over here. There we go. Can't believe it's acting this way. This thing is holding on for dear life. I don't understand it. Wow, finally. So it's just squeezed in between these two here and I'll rotate this, but remind me to <laughs> rotate it back. So uh, it's just squeezed between these two things. You slide the bolt through and then it's tightened. Now when you rotate this thing like I just did, you're rotating the steering wheel inside. So make sure that you don't rotate this all the way around and forget where you're at. You may only be able to turn a little bit one way and too far the other. Getting it back in will be easy um, because uh, I'm just gonna do it like I did on the Titan. I just sand this down and clean this surface on both sides and it just goes in a hell of a lot more smoothly than it comes out. So we'll do that here in a little bit. But in the meantime, if you see this, we flip this back and this gives us a lot more space. Now that that obstruction is free, let's free up our ball joint. We start by removing our cotter pin. Just pull that back, straighten it out here. Start pushing it through. I'm gonna grab a punch that I was using earlier. Once you get enough meat on the other side of it, you can usually pull it through the other side. There we go, excellent. And then let's break this loose. It's gonna be a 22 millimeter. We're gonna wanna go this way. <laughs> awesome. Once that's loose, I'm gonna back it all the way off and then I'm gonna put it back on uh, like all the way through the nut. We'll talk about why in a second. Now you wanna put this back on until it's about all the way through the nut. And the reason that I take it all the way off first is that uh, sometimes it's difficult to get the nut off once this is freed up. Sometimes it will just spin on you. So I take it all the way off, then I put it back on until you can feel the bolt in the bottom. That way when we release this, it's gonna hold on to it, not just drop everything. And what's nice is that since we're not reusing this, we're not expecting to get this ball joint back in. And of course, we're not even gonna use the control arm. So we can use slightly more destructive methods like a pickle fork. Pickle forks work pretty well, but they tend to really mess up, a, at a minimum, they mess up the boot on the ball joint. And at a maximum, they'll actually bend your control arm. So I'm just gonna get the pickle fork in here and try to work it, work this out here. There we go. So that's out. And as you can see, it grabbed onto the nut and now it's just sitting like this. We're gonna go uh, support this with a jack. We're gonna support the bottom of the knuckle here. And that way, when we take out our bolts, take off the whole upper control arm, it's not just gonna put all the weight on the shock and the lower control arm and so on. Grab our floor jack here, line it up. And then just so it touches, there we go. Now that we have our new found room, I'm going to grab a 19 millimeter wrench, 19 millimeter socket with a breaker bar, and I'm also gonna grab my ratchet for once it's loose. So on this one, I'm gonna throw it on this side here, grab my breaker bar. Honestly, you actually don't need the wrench right now. I just threw it on there, but there we go. Excellent. Make sure it's all the way loose here. Perfect. Now you can see that the bolt spinning, so we're clear. And then let's just go break the other one while I'm using the breaker bar. I'm gonna do it this way, but if you do decide to do it this way, you gotta be very careful because you will damage your brake lines. So I'm just very gently breaking it loose. 
because it's more of a, it's a pain over here because you have your control arm and you have, you know, obviously the steering in the way. So if you just go over here, if you, and if you're very careful, you'll be fine. But I already learned my lesson on the Titan. I did this and I smashed into my brake lines and they were rotten right here and they busted through. So I had to replace them all. But um, I saw it as a blessing in disguise. Now that those are broken loose, we can just grab our ratchet. Uh, there we go. I was able to squeeze the ratchet on this side and then we can back the nut off of this side. All right, slide that nut off, set it aside. We are going to be reusing these, so be careful with them. There we go. And then same story on this side. All right, everything should be loose here. So I'm gonna take the nut off of the ball joint and I have a little piece of twine ready. And what we're gonna do with the twine is when we pull this off, you're gonna see that it wants to fall forward. And if it falls forward, it's gonna put a bunch of pressure on these lines here. So I'm gonna grab some twine, just feed it through this. There we go. And you can run it pretty much anywhere that uh, it isn't gonna obstruct or hurt anything. I'm just gonna run it on my coil here, pull it through. That's just gonna hold it in place. Great, now that that's supported, remove your rear bolts. There's that one. And now this one we're doing last because we're probably gonna have to move this around a little bit to try to free up some space here. Ah, come on. That's our problem right there. And I'm pulling the control arm this way to try to free up some space over there. Ah, hopefully I'm not doing any damage to this boot here. But I'm just gonna push, slide it out. Yes, there we go. And of course my arm was covering that, but what I had to do, let me just pull this out. I had to take my left hand, push up on this, and this slid out down the side. And did I tear it? No. Luckily I didn't tear it. Gotta be real careful with that. But now when I go to install this, I'm gonna flip flop it. So I'm gonna slide the bolt in this way. So that way in the future, if I ever have to remove my upper control arm, I'm not gonna have to deal with this at all. Actually, I won't even have to take it off, which is really nice. So grab your new control arm, slide it in, and then I'm gonna grab my bolt, slide it in there. There we go. Awesome. There's one. All right, grab our other one. Line that up. Where's it at? There it goes. And now, I'm going to uh, go cut my twine and then drop the ball joint into the knuckle. But before I do that, I'm just going to uh, wipe this off real quick as well. All right, that's nice and clean. Swing my arm up here and get that in place. There we go. And I'm gonna grab my new nut here that came with the arm and just finger tighten it for now. And then of course do the same with the nuts on the mounting bolts. Next up, we're gonna tighten everything down to spec. However, before we do that, we're actually gonna put the weight of the vehicle back on the wheels. Now to do that, you would normally put the wheels and tires back on and lower it to the ground, but that's gonna give us a lot of clearance issues. What I'm gonna do instead is actually jack up the Xterra from the bottom of this knuckle. So we're acting as if the weight is back on this side. I have the jack on the bottom of the knuckle being protected by a piece of wood here. And I'm gonna jack up ah, until it's no longer on the jack stand on this side. This is called preloading your bushings. So the reason we're doing this is because you don't want the bushings under tension all the time basically, which is what would happen if you tighten them all down while everything was drooped. And then when, obviously when you put the weight back on it, it moves everything back up. So those bushings would be under tension all the time. So that will either prematurely wear them or it'll just tear them. So I'm gonna tighten the ball joint down to 58 and then the mounts are gonna to go to 94. All right, I put it to 58 and then, uh, and then I just turned it you know, just far enough to get the cotter pin in. So just put your pin in there and split it. There we go. And then get these down to 94. All right, everything is down to spec. 
I'm going to go grab a little bit of sandpaper, clean this arm off here, there we go, and then I'm gonna reinstall this. Apparently I spoke too soon when I said this was gonna go back in easily. Uh, I think I might try a little C-clamp or something, but it's, this one's particularly tight for some reason. The Titan wasn't nearly as difficult as this. All right, I have a C-clamp and I'm gonna go in through the hood and we're gonna show this thing who's boss. Hopefully this is working. Yeah, it's going. I just can't believe it's this difficult. I don't know why it's acting like this. There it goes. Oh my God, this is absurd. I ended up taping, this is, this is ridiculous. I ended up taping the nut from the old ball joint onto the bottom of my C-clamp so it would push inside of here and push this up. But now, for whatever reason, it had to get past something because now it's completely loose in here and all the way up. So now we just need to grab that nut, slide it in here, slide it back through here. All right, there we go. Get our nut back on there before something crazy happens. Tighten that down. <sighs> okay, with that buttoned up, I'm gonna lower this back down onto the jack stand. There we go. And we just have to go get our tire and install that. On the bright side, when you get to the passenger side or the right side, uh, you don't have this to contend with. So when you repeat this process, it's really just the same thing, except you don't have to deal with steering. Let's get this button back up and then we'll debrief. So all in all, not that bad of a job. Now, really the most uh, difficult thing, at least for me, was dealing with that steering linkage. It wasn't nearly as difficult on the Titan and today it just wanted to fight me. Sometimes that's how jobs go, right? A few quick things before we wrap up today's video. First and foremost, uh, you really should be installing lower control arm cam bolts along with these new upper control arms. So that way when you bring it in for an alignment, you can actually, well, get it aligned. If you need help with that, I of course have a video in the upper right hand corner of the screen, so go ahead and click that. And if you need to pick them up, you can of course pick them up from All Dogs as well. Because with most suspension parts that you replace, you really need to go get an alignment after you're done with this job. So not only will these upper control arms give you more camber, they'll also give you a positive caster. All Dogs said you should expect between three and four degrees of positive caster, and you should be able to get to the standard 0.5 degrees of camber with these arms with no issue. Positive caster is generally considered a good thing. There is uh, really two main benefits. One is highway speed stability, so it helps you stay stable when you're on high speeds after you're lifted, and then also, how quickly your steering wheel rebounds once you come out of a turn. A positive caster will encourage your wheel to go back to neutral once you let go of it. But that's it, my friends. I am super excited about this setup. I feel like I have probably the best setup I can get without going full Titan swap. It looks good, it's clearly stronger, and I have a ton more clearance than I used to have around that coil bucket. As always, if you like this video, please go ahead, scroll down and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And if you feel this video saved you a lot of time, money, or hassle, go ahead and say thanks by buying me a beer using that super thanks button down below. Any comments, questions, or suggestions, throw them in the comments below and see you in the next one.